Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us for another worship experience. Uh, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for another opportunity. And we pray now that you would help us to value you wanting to be with us and uh, help us to value the plan that you have for us to be with you and help us to uh, just uh, embrace the idea of being a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is not too much for you to ask. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text for today is found in the book of Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Very familiar passage of scripture, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And I'm reading from the English Standard Version. It reads, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your minds, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. Our subject for today is right relationship means right living. Right relationships means right living. If you don't live right, uh, it's basically impossible to have a right relationship with God. This week, we're basically talking only about our relationship with God. Next week, the Lord's will, we'll be talking about our relationship with one another. Now, in all of Paul's letters, Paul concluded with a list of practical duties that were based on the doctrine that he had discussed. In the Christian's life, doctrine and duties always go together. What we believe helps to determine how we behave. Can I say that again? What we believe helps to determine how we behave. It's not enough for us to understand Paul's doctrinal explanations, but we must translate our learning into living and show by our daily lives that we trust God's word. Hallelujah. The key idea in this section of Paul's letter to the Romans is relationships. The term relational theology is a relatively new one, but the idea is not new. The term is new, but the idea is not new. If we have a right, right relationship with God, we will have a right relationship with the people who are part of our lives. If a man says, I love God and hateth his brother, he's a liar, according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. Now, our relationship to God, uh, in, as we found in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, uh, this is the fourth, therefore, in this letter uh, to the Romans. Romans chapter 3, verse uh, 20 is the therefore uh, of condemnation, declaring that the whole world is guilty before God. Romans 5 and 1 is the therefore of justification. And Romans 8 and 1 is the therefore of assurance. There is no condemnation. Now in Romans 12 and 1, we have the de therefore of dedication. And it is this dedication that is the basis for our, uh, for our relationship with uh, others that Paul discusses in this section. What is true dedication? 
as Paul describes it here, Christian dedication involves three steps. The first step is to give God your body as per uh, verse one, give God your body. Before we trusted Christ, we used our bodies for sinful pleasures and purposes, just like uh, Eve and Adam did in the Garden of Eden. But now we belong to Jesus and we want to use our bodies for his glory. The Christian body is God's temple, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20, because the Spirit of God dwells within us, according to Romans 8 and 9. It is our privilege to glorify Christ in our bodies and magnify Christ in our bodies, according to Philippians uh, chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Now, as you can tell, uh, I've got a lot of scriptures and don't have time to read them. Uh, but uh, it gives you some uh, ha a means of participating in this sermon. You look up the scripture and you read them and, and, and gives you an opportunity to check out whether I'm saying what is biblical or not. Now, let us continue. Just as Jesus Christ had to take on himself a body in order to accomplish God's will on earth, so we must yield our bodies to Christ that he might continue God's work through us. We must yield uh, the members of the body as instruments of righteousness, according to Romans 6, 13. For the Holy Spirit to use in the, in the doing of God's work. The Old Testament sacrifices were dead sacrifices, but we are to be living sacrifices. There are two living sacrifices in the Bible, and they help us to understand what this really means. The first is Isaac in Genesis chapter 22. The second is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, Isaac uh, was willingly placed upon the altar by his father, Abraham. In other words, he went to the altar as a dying sacrifice, but he didn't die. He went back home with Abraham as a living sacrifice. Uh, but he would have died in obedience to God's will, but the Lord sent a ram to take his place. And God has sent a ram to take each and every one of our places on that altar as a sacrifice. Isaac died just the same. He died to self and willingly yielded himself to the will of God. And so must we. When he got off the altar, all Isaac was a living sacrifice to the glory of God. Now, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ in the per is the perfect illustration of a living sacrifice because he actually died as a sacrifice in obedience to his father's will. Remember, he was obedient even unto death, the cross death of the cross. Now, but he rose again, and, 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 and to today he is in heaven as a living sacrifice, bearing in his body the wounds of Calvary. He is our high priest, according to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 through 16, and our advocate, uh, based upon the statement in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 before the throne of God. He's there making intercessions for us. The verb present in this verse means present once and for all. In its command uh, is a definite commitment of the body to the Lord. 
just as a bride and a groom in their wedding uh, service commits themselves to each other. It is this once for all commitment that determines what they do with their bodies. Paul gives us two reasons for this commitment. The first reason is it is the right response to all that God has done for us. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. So it is the right response, first of all. Secondly, this commitment is our reasonable service. It's our spiritual worship. This means that every day is a worship experience when our bodies are yielded to the Lord. Now, the second point I want to make is we must give him our minds. We must yield our minds to the Lord. The word, uh, the world wants to control our minds, but God wants to transform our minds. Hallelujah. Can I say that again? The world wants to control our minds. But God wants to transform our mind. And you can find more about that in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through 24, and Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 11. This word transform is the same as transfigure, as it's used in Matthew chapter 17, verse 2. It has come into our English language as the word uh, and, and metamorphosis, or now I spell it M-E-T-A-M-O-R-P-H-O-S-I-S, a change. God wants to change our mindset. It describes a change from within. The world wants to change our minds so it exerts pressure from the outside, somebody trying to talk you into something. But the Holy Spirit changes our mind by releasing power from within, from the inside. The Holy Spirit lives within us. If the world controls uh, our thinking, then we are a conformer. But if God controls our thinking, we are a transformer. God transforms our mind and makes us spiritually minded by using his word. As you spend time meditating on God's word and memorizing it and making it a part of our inner man or woman, God will gradually, gradually, make our minds more spiritual. You can see more on that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Third point, and I'm out of here. We must learn to give God uh, our will. We must learn to give God our will. Our mind controls our body and our will controls our minds. Many people think that they can control their will by willpower, but usually they fail. This was Paul's experience also that's recorded in Romans chapter 7, verse 15 through 21. It's, it is only when we yield the will to God that his power can take over and give us the willpower and the want to power that we need to be victorious Christians. I think I need to say that again. It's only when we yield our will to God that his power can take over and give us the willpower within us and the want to power in essence that will that we need to be victorious Christians. 
We surrendered our will to God through uh, disciplined prayer. That's one way. We, we surrender our will to God through disciplined prayer, not always asking God for something or telling God uh, what, we, what, he, what, what we want from him. But it's like Jesus did on the cross. Not my will, but thy will be done. As we spend time in prayer, we surrender our will to God and prayer with the Lord. As I just stated, not my will, but thy will be done. We must pray about everything and let God have his way in everything. For many years, I've tried to begin each day by surrendering my body to the Lord. And then I spend time with his word and let him transform my mind, prepare my thinking for that new day. And then I pray and I yield the plans that I have for that day and I let him work as he sees best through me. I especially pray about those uh, tasks that are upset or worries me. And he always sees me through them. To have a right relationship with God, we must start the day by yielding to him our bodies, our minds, and our will. Just as Jesus did one Friday on an old rugged cross on a hill called Calvary. He died. Didn't he die? When he said, into thy hands I commit my spirit, Jesus was yielding to God his body, mind, and will. In other words, all of me I give to thee. And because of this commitment, Friday wasn't the last day. Because of this commitment, Jesus was victorious and it shows when he rose from the dead with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. And if you want some power in this life, you want to stop walking around like a weakling in this spiritual life that we are to live, you got to learn to yield your mind, your body, and your will to God. And, and he will give you victories after victories. And that's all I've got for today. I pray that God will give, uh, use this, this, this sermon to help you to have a right relationship through right living with him. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for another experience of your word. We pray now that you would give the increase that we will do, be more than hearers, but we will be doers of your word that we will truly yield our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, which is our reasonable service, and that we won't be conformed to this world, but we'll be transformed by the renewal of our minds. In Jesus' powerful name we pray, amen. And with that, I'm going to say be careful, take care of yourselves, take care of those around you, by wearing a mask and just pray about everything. And with that, see you next time. Bye-bye.